What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be going through my top 36 wide receivers as we head into week 12 of the fantasy football season. As always, if this is your first time at the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of our future content, especially the running back version of this video that is going to be coming out later today. Without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these rankings. All right, so as you can see, we got the tier maker pulled up on the screen. I got 36 wide receivers and seven tiers to get through all 36 of those wide receivers. So we are going to be kicking it off in the elite wide receiver one tier. Now I have five wide receivers in this tier here this week, kicking it off with AJ Brown, followed by Amon Ross St. Brown, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, and Nico Collins to round out that top five. Now there are a couple matchups that I want to talk about. Specifically, we have a good matchup for AJ Brown, where he does play against the Los Angeles Rams on the road there in Los Angeles. Right now, the Los Angeles Rams are giving up 3.8 fantasy points above expectation, which is a very good matchup. So he should have the opportunity to score some extra fantasy football points in this one. Now, I do have some bad matchups as well that we should talk about in this tier. But like we said, these are the elite wide receiver ones. We shouldn't really be worried about the matchups too much. Justin Jefferson, he has a tough matchup against the Chicago Bears. That one's going to be on the road there in Chicago. Nico Collins has a bad matchup against the Tennessee Titans. That one is going to be in Houston. So he should at least have the home field advantage when you look at the points above expectations in these matchups Justin Jefferson right now the Chicago Bears are averaging negative 4.3 points above expectation and Nico Collins against the Tennessee Titans they are averaging negative 4.9 points above expectation so both of those matchups are a little bit tougher those defenses are just allowing fewer points to those wide receiver positions so that's why they're at the bottom of this tier but like I said elite wide receiver ones we're not too worried about the matchups overall let's move on to tier two tier two I have four wide receivers in that high end wide receiver one tier. I got number six overall, George Pickens. Then I have seven overall, Terry McLaurin, eight, Tuka Nakua, and nine, Malik Neighbors. And that rounds out that high end wide receiver one tier for me. There are a couple matchups again to talk about in this one. Good matchup for George Pickens on Thursday night football at the Cleveland Browns. Right now, they're giving up five points above expectations. So that is one of the better matchups for the wide receiver position right now, at least when you're looking at those points above expectation. Another good matchup in this tier is going to be Malik Neighbors. He gets the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're allowing 3.8 points above expectation right now. So again, another matchup where they're just allowing a little bit more fantasy points to that wide receiver position so we should be targeting that matchup now I will admit Puka Nakua he is my number eight wide receiver but he has a horrible horrible matchup here this week you look at the matchup versus the Philadelphia Eagles right now there's a narrative on the internet Quintanamo Bay for Quinion Mitchell he is basically shutting down opposing wide receivers and the numbers actually show and represent this as well when you look at that fantasy points above expectation right now the Philadelphia Eagles are allowing negative six points seven points above expectations so that is the best defense wide receiver matchup in the NFL at the moment they're allowing the least amount of points there to that position group so this is a very very tough matchup for Puka Nakua I'm still not going to get too overworked about that matchup here in my fantasy football leagues he's still my number eight overall wide receiver but it's definitely something worth paying attention to especially if you're playing DFS you're playing some of these other things he might be a matchup where we're just not looking at that this week but in your regular redraft leagues your regular dynasty leagues, you're still going to be playing Puka Nakua. He's probably one of your better wide receivers. So that's going to take us over to tier three. Tier three is going to be those low end wide receiver ones. And I have a total of five wide receivers in this tier. We're going to go with Mike Evans, Cooper Cup, CD Lamb, Zay Flowers, and DK Metcalf. And that rounds out my tier three. There is that horrible matchup again for Cooper Cup. Like we mentioned, just negative 6.7 points above expectation. That is tough, man. I'm telling you, like that is very, very, very good defensive numbers from the Eagles so kind of just dialing it in with Cooper Cup as well making that noted in this matchup here and paying attention to that as well I also want to bring up the fact that there are two guys in this tier that are going to be going into the weekend probably questionable with injuries right now Mike Evans obviously he is returning from IR he did have that hamstring injury that left him on IR I do expect him to play this week that does seem like that is kind of the trajectory in which he is going if he plays just like Nico Collins when Nico Collins came off of that hamstring injury you plugged him into your lineups as soon as he was available the same thing is going to happen with Mike Evans this is going to be a pretty solid matchup for Mike Evans and he should see a lot of opportunities especially with Chris Godwin off of the football field the same thing can be said for CeeDee Lamb CeeDee Lamb is going to be probable this weekend 
Washington with a back injury. He plays against the Washington Commanders on the road. We know that right now they don't have Dak Prescott. It is Cooper Rush. It looked a little bit better for C.D. Lamb last week. It wasn't uh, as bad as the week before, but that being said, we are still tempering those expectations with C.D. Lamb probably for the remainder of the year with Dak Prescott out of the lineup, and he does have that back injury I just wanted to note going into the weekend. Now let's move on to my tier four. My tier four is those high-end wide receiver twos. I got a total of five wide receivers in this tier as well. We're going to kick it off at wide receiver 15 with Ladd McConkey. Then I have Jackson Smith and Jigba, Juwan Jennings, Devonta Smith, and Cortland Sutton. That rounds out my tier four of wide receivers. We got a couple good matchups, a couple bad matchups. Let's talk about them. 15, Ladd McConkey. He goes and plays against the Baltimore Ravens. This is a matchup at home in Los Angeles on Monday Night Football. This is the best wide receiver matchup of the weekend. A great matchup for the Los Angeles Chargers. Right now, when you look at that points above expectation, Baltimore is allowing 8.6 fantasy points above expectation. That is the most in the NFL by a pretty decent margin. So we are going to be targeting that matchup for Ladd McConkey. Should be an opportunity for him to score some extra fantasy football points for us as well. Now, in the spirit of good matchups, also at number 18, I got Devontae Smith. He gets a matchup against the Los Angeles Rams. We talked about that with A.J. Brown. They are allowing about 3.8 fantasy points above expectation there in Los Angeles. So that should apply to A.J. AJ, it should also apply to Devonta Smith as well. Devonta Smith's been on a little bit of a slump over the last couple of weeks. We're hoping he can get it going here in week 12. Now, there is a bad matchup in this tier, and it is going to be Cortland Sutton. I really like what Cortland Sutton and Bo Nix have been doing for the Denver Broncos. Sutton is seeing a ton of targets, but this matchup this week against Las Vegas, it is a little bit tougher. It's on the road in Las Vegas. They are allowing negative 4.5 fantasy points above expectation right now they did a pretty decent job last week on Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle Tyreek he bounced back because he got into the end zone but overall the week wasn't fantastic from Tyreek Hill either so Cortland Sutton he is in for a little bit of a tougher matchup this week but I'm still viewing him as this high end wide receiver two in our fantasy football lineups now we're going to go on to tier five tier five is those low end wide receiver twos I got a total of five wide receivers in this tier as well we're going to go 20 Marvin Harrison Jr 21 Debo Samuel 22 Jaden Reed 23, Jamison Williams, and 24, DeAndre Hopkins. Now, there really isn't many of the good or bad matchups to talk about here, but there is a couple points that I want to bring up. It does feel like Marvin Harrison Jr., if you are not past your trade deadline right now, he does feel like a guy that I would be buying going into the back half of the season. There's a lot of good matchups for him starting this week. Now, right now, the points above expectation, it's not fantastic or at least good enough for us to bring up against the Seattle Seahawks defense, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is definitely a player that I'm excited about in the back half of the year, potentially a back half sleeper in this second half going to your fantasy football playoffs. Now, Debo Samuel, I got him below Juwan Jennings this week. He has been quite simply outplayed by Juwan Jennings, and he has been out-targeted by Juwan Jennings. So right now, I'm viewing Debo Samuel as a wide receiver two in our lineups. I am going to put him below Juwan Jennings, though, because of that. Also, I want to talk about DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins, he's been pretty good for the Kansas City Chiefs. He gets a good matchup this week against Carolina. Carolina, they've been mediocre against the wide receiver position, but we know that this game could get out of hand very quickly and then they could lean on the run with Kareem Hunt and Isaiah Pacheco potentially back in the lineup and some other things as well. So for me, a low-end wide receiver two this week, but I would not be surprised if he gets into the end zone. Now let's move on to tier six. Tier six is what we're going to call those high-end wide receiver threes. I got a total of six wide receivers in this tier. It's kicking it off at wide receiver 25, Josh Downs. Then you got Calvin Ridley, Quinton Johnston, Cedric Tillman, Rome Odunze, and Tank Dell to finish off this tier. Couple good matchups, couple bad matchups. Just again, Quinton Johnston, he gets that really, really good matchup, just like Ladd McConkey against the Baltimore Ravens. This is by far the best matchup in football right now this week for wide receivers specifically. Same thing applies to Quinton Johnston. I think you can plug him into your lineups this week pretty confidently, and there should be pretty good opportunity for him to get into the end zone here this week. Now, another good matchup in this tier is Romo Dunze, and for me, Romo Dunze, who plays against the Minnesota Vikings this week, gets to see that 4.2 fantasy points above expectation from that defense, which is pretty good. He's also surpassed DJ Moore in this offense to me as the number one wide receiver for Caleb Williams. Over the past couple of weeks, he's gotten more receiving yards than DJ Moore. He's on pace for the same amount, if not more targets than DJ Moore over the last couple of weeks. And it feels like Romo Dunze is working downfield a little bit more as well. Pair that with a good matchup. And I think we can put Romo Dunze over DJ Moore in our rankings here this week. Now, a couple bad matchups. You got Cedric Tillman in a bad matchup on Thursday night against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're still going to be playing him in your lineups, but right now the Steelers are allowing negative 
four fantasy points above expectations. So just a little bit of a tougher matchup. He should see a little bit of Joey Porter. And that being said, though, Jameis Winston is still going to Jameis Winston. So there is going to be plenty of deep balls probably to go around. And then Tank Dell, he gets a little bit of a tougher matchup as well. We talked about that with Nico Collins. I said I wasn't too worried about Nico Collins because Nico Collins is an elite wide receiver one. I'm a little bit more worried about Tank Dell. He didn't look as good last week with Nico Collins back in the lineup. Like I said, that matchup against Tennessee, they're allowing negative 4.9 fantasy points above expectations. So I expect that to trickle down to Tank Dell. He's kind of a guy who is going to rely on some big plays. We'll see if that happens this week, but he's a little bit of a riskier start to me and a guy that I'm looking at as more of a wide receiver three for our fantasy football teams. Now let's go on to that final tier. We got that tier seven and those are the low end wide receiver threes. I got a total of six wide receivers in this tier as well. Kicking it off at 31, DJ Moore, Jalen Waddle, Jacoby Myers, Jerry Judy, Christian Watson, and Xavier worthy to finish off the list we're going to talk about that good matchup again for dj moore i mentioned that with rome odunze but like i said rome odunze has surpassed dj moore in my opinion in this pecking order of this depth chart if you just follow the targets you follow the receiving yards it really does look that way so we have moved dj moore below rome odunze in the rankings to reflect that now when you look at some of these bad matchups in this tier you have jacoby myers who does get that denver matchup we've talked about pat sertan i don't know how much pat sertan is going to follow jacoby myers but right now denver they are a very bad matchup allowing negative 5.7 fantasy points above expectations so like you said the numbers they reflect that this is going to be a very tough matchup for Jacoby Myers and it just may be the Brock Bauer show here on out for the Las Vegas Raiders and then Jerry Judy he gets a tough matchup as well we talked about that with Cedric Tillman you get to pair that with a knee injury for Jerry Judy as well I think he's probable to go in this one I don't expect him to miss any time but he is dealing with a little bit of a banged up knee issue you get the bad matchup that is allowing negative four fantasy points above expectations versus Pittsburgh on a short week Thursday night a little bit of risk there with Jerry Judy but like I said Jameis Winston going Jameis Winston and that's what's going to happen here for the Cleveland Browns so somebody's going to be valuable it may even be Elijah Moore who's not in my top 36 here this week but there you have it folks that is my top 36 wide receivers as we head into week 12 as always these rankings are going to update and change throughout the week make sure you are a member of our discord we do have a free discord linked in the description so you can ask me any updated questions throughout the week as things change as more news comes out as those injury reports come out make sure you're a member of that discord like i said free to join so there is no risk in doing that also while you're down there in the description or near the bottom of the video make sure you hit the like button also make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you can see the running back version of this video when it does come out here later today trying to help you guys win your week 12s trying to help you guys win some fantasy football championships but with all of that being said i have nothing else for you guys today so i will see you on our next episode but until then peace out